The next graph topic that we have is about bridges and articulation points. And the reason that we go through this is not that these are uh, particularly uh, common problem to face, but it shows an interesting way that you can build on top of something like a depth first search to perform a more complex operation. And so, so this is an example of that. So we need to first define what bridges and articulation points are. And basically these are points in an undirected graph. So we're gonna, I'm going to assume that everything here is undirected. And these are gonna be points in an undirected graph where if you remove either an edge or if you remove a vertex that it disconnects the graph. Uh, so for instance, if I have something that is you know, like this, um, then that edge right there is a bridge because if I were to remove that, that edge, it would disconnect the graph. And notice in this particular graph, if I removed any other edge, it would not disconnect the graph. Uh, so that is an example of a bridge. And likewise, articulation points are vertices where if you remove them, it will disconnect the graph. Uh, so uh, both that and that are articulation points. Uh, because if you remove either one of them, uh, then the graph breaks up into two different parts. Now, generally, you can, if if you have an articulation point, you can imagine, you know, some graph like this, um, where if I remove this the central one, once I remove it, it might break it up into many different components. So I might go from one component in this case to five different components if I remove that one vertex. If you remove a bridge, it always separates one component into two. So it just increases the number of components by one. But an articulation point can break it up into several points. And so the question is, how can we actually find where bridges and articulation points are. Can we determine if one exists and, and if so, where it is? And we can do this by modifying a depth first search. Now let's talk first of all about the very naive approach. So a naive approach would be, we could just go through every vertex one by one and remove it and see if the graph is still connected. And if it is still connected, then, uh, then it's not an articulation point. And if it's disconnected, then it was. Um, and likewise, we could do the same for every edge. We could take an edge out and see if it's a disconnected graph. And if so, it was a bridge. And if not, it wasn't. Um, but that would be very slow. We'd have to do that. We'd have to check connected components every time uh, for the graph uh, for every single vertex or every single edge. And so the alternative that we're going to have is that we will perform a depth first search And we are going to keep two pieces of information at every node. So we will keep the depth, which is the order the node was visited. And we will also keep what we will call a low value at each node. And what that means, this is going to be the, uh, the lowest depth value reachable by that node or its descendants. Okay, and the basic idea of what this is going to do is that this low value is going to let us identify back edges in the graph. So if we imagine that we start out with a graph and we start sort of start moving through it and we go down and then we get a node that goes, an edge that goes back up to a previous point. Well, that's showing us that we have a cycle. If we have one of these back edges that goes, that goes back earlier in the graph. Um, and the fact that we've got a, a um, cycle uh, means that 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 it's not a bridge. That um, that basically, uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, if you've got a cycle, you can remove any edge in that cycle because none of them are going to be bridges. They're not disconnecting each other. They're all connected in another route. Um, and you can also use this to identify articulation points. Uh, so so basically, if there if there is not a back edge, then there is a bridge, and if there is a back edge, uh, then then there's uh, then there is not a sorry. If there is 
If there is not a back edge, then you do have a bridge. And it, likewise, if you have a bridge, then you do not have a, a back edge. Okay. So, um, so the low value is going to help us do that. Uh, and once we have the low value there, uh, what we can do is we can actually calculate whether or not a point is a bridge point or an articulation point. Uh, so here's here's the here's the the idea of that. I'll, I'll leave this up here and use this for a moment. So it is a bridge. I, I should say an edge UV is a bridge if and only if um, there are the neighbor vertex um, that are, sorry, like, you know, the, the next one, V, the low value at U is greater than the depth at V or likewise, the depth at U is greater than the low value at V. Okay, so basically you get a bridge only if you get this disparity between low and depth, and I'll, I'll illustrate this in just a minute. Um, and you can say that a vertex is an articulation point. Um, if one of its neighbors has a low value or equal to Okay, because basically, if if your neighbor has a low value that's that's uh, either the same as your depth or something smaller, it means that by going to one of those neighbors, by going down to the neighbor node, it, it's got a way of getting back up to something that came earlier. So there's going to be um, there's going to be something there, and and basically, if you disconnect it, uh, like like sorry. Um, it's again easier if I illustrate. But if you disk, if you were to remove this node, then um, then the low value that it has, it's it's never like the fact that it's greater means there's not you know some route to get back to something earlier. So you're going to disconnect from that neighbor when you do that. Okay, so um, so let's let's do this. Um, oh, and I should mention that there's also a special case, the root node. Um, has to be handled a little bit differently um, for an articulation point. The root node is just whatever you pick as the root, the, the point, the root node is, this is going to be your starting point. The DFS, um, you don't have to have been told what the new root is going to be ahead of time. Um, and so uh, this, this is an articulation point, if and only if, uh, there are two children that are not part of the same branch. Okay, so let's let's illustrate this. I think I think this is something that's a whole lot easier to see with an illustration. Um, so I'm going to make a graph here, and it's one that hopefully you can look at this and see pretty quickly what the uh, bridges and articulation points are going to be. Uh, so we'll connect this up here, like this, and connect off to another set of three down here. Okay, so if I just look at this, I can see, well, I've got a bridge. In fact, I think there's just one bridge. This is going to be the bridge right here, um, where if I remove that, it's going to disconnect the graph. I think everywhere else in the graph, if you remove one of the edges, it's going to be, um, you'll, you'll still leave everything connected. Um, and we have a few articulation points. I'll mark those with these blue dots, uh, where if we remove any of those articulation points, that's going to uh, that's going to also disconnect the graph. There's going to be some disconnection that forms uh, when we do that. 
So hopefully we have a method that's going to that's going to start out that way and 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 generate this for us. So what we will do is we will do a depth first search and I'll just start up here at the upper left and I'll I'll start um, I'll use blue for the for the depth value. So the depth value of the first node is going to be zero. And I'm going to just do a depth first search. And what I will do at each node to set the low value. So the low value will either will be the will be the minimum of my depth and a depth from, well, I should say, a low value from a descent. Okay, so the low is going to be the minimum of my depth or the low from the descent. So, um, so I start out with zero. I might go over here for node number one and node number two, and I'm still sort of recursively going down here three. And I, I'll go four, so I traverse this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, go down here to five, and here to six, and over here to seven. And now notice here I'm at seven, and I try to look at this edge. Well, this edge now goes back to five, so I can't recurse any farther. That's, that's basically a back edge. And so my low value, which I'll put here in green, the low value, I'll I'll mark these with green, is going to be the minimum of my current depth or whatever I can see. So since seven can see five, it will mark its low as five. Now it doesn't, it never marks its own parent. The only thing it can't see is its own parent, but the low value for this is seven or five. Um, as far as six, what is its low value? It, it could be six or it could be the low from a descendant. The only descendant right here is number seven. So it's also going to have the low value of five. Five is going to have a low value of itself or the low from the descendant, either way. The answer there is five. Okay, back up here to number four. Uh, if we have if we have node uh, number four, uh, number four, it can see back to one, so it's going to have a low value here of one. Over here, three, the, the minimum between three and the low of its descendant is one, so is one. Likewise, two, we have a low value of one. One, the low is gonna be itself or, well, actually we're not done. I'm sorry, we can't do that. We have to go this direction. So the last depth that we hit was seven. So this node over here will be node eight. And notice that node eight is going to be able to see up here to node zero. So it's going to have a low value of zero. And one here will also have a low value of zero. And we finally end up with zero as having a low value of zero. Okay, so there are our values. In blue is the depth. And in green is the low value. And so if you want to remind yourself of what these things are, an edge is going to be a bridge if the low at one is greater than the depth uh, at its neighbor. Okay, so let's let's take a look at each of these. So if I look at the low value at one at one node, let's let's pick this one. If that low value is greater than the depth of one of its neighbors, then it's a bridge. So that's not the case here. If I look at the next one, zero is not greater, you know, zero and two, that's not greater. Um, one and three is not greater. I can kind of look at a lot of these and, and I'll, I'll verify that they're not greater. So you have to go through every edge and check it just once. Um, but notice um, uh, at, at some point, I am going to have something where the low value at one node here is greater than the depth value at its neighbor. Okay, in other words, five right here is greater than four. And because of that, that means that this, that this edge right here is a bridge. Okay, so that's a, that's a bridge there. Okay, and likewise, if we want to remind ourselves of, the, um, of whether it's an articulation point, then one of its neighbors has to have uh, a low value greater than or equal to its depth. So it's any vertex where a neighboring vertex has a low value greater than or equal to its depth. Okay, so again, if we start up here at the at the beginning, and, uh, and I'll use a, uh, uh, I'll change the color of my pen briefly to, uh, let's go to this light blue, okay. Um, so if I look at the, at the low value, of, of one node, 
uh, and compare it to the depth at the next node, um, zero is not greater than or equal to one. So that is not going to be, um, so the first one is not an articulation point. Likewise, the low value zero is not greater than or equal to eight. So that node there is not an articulation point. Um, let's look at this next one, which we know from just looking at the graph is an articulation point. Uh, if I look at the low value, which is zero, it is in fact at the same or greater value than one of its neighbors. So zero and zero, those are there. Therefore, this is an articulation point, okay? Likewise, if I just sort of glance at the other articulation points, uh, this one right here, it has a low value of one. And notice that its value is the same as the depth right there. Those are equal. Therefore, that is an articulation point. And uh, over here for this last one, its low value of five um, is going to be the uh, is going to be the same or greater than the depth of a neighbor. So five is greater than four. Therefore, that is also an articulation point. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you think about it, uh, a bridge. If you if you have a bridge, I, I believe this is always the case. You, the things on either side of the bridge need to be articulation points because obviously, if that's going to disconnect the graph, then removing either one of its edges also dis or either one of its vertices also disconnects the graph. Um, so bridges have to have both of their endpoints be articulation points, uh, but. It's not the other way around. You can have two articulation points like you see here without the thing in between it being a bridge. So notice that that this edge right there is not a bridge, even though both sides are articulation points. Okay, so that's the summary of bridges and articulation points. This is a useful approach if you have, you know, a problem like say you've got a network and you want to know uh, where could I cut the network, like could I break one of the connections, or if these are say servers in the network, what if I took out one of the servers, would I disconnect the network? Um, and it's a way of sort of analyzing the vulnerability of, a, of some network to uh, a failure in one of the links or one of the nodes in that network. Okay.